In this tutorial, I'll review starting a simple Mesa troll milling program, with a detailed review of the top line and the WPC coordinate system. To get started, I'll go to the program page. Select work number, and enter the name of a new program. I can create either a G-code program, or a Mesa troll program. I'll create a Mesa troll program. Right away, I'm prompted with a question from the control to begin developing the program. The proper material selection is important for the control to be able to give automatically developed feed rates and spindle speeds throughout the program. The materials shown are from a group of preset materials and cutting conditions found on the cutting condition pages. These settings were developed by Mazak and may not match your desired numbers, but it's easy to edit the cutting condition pages and even add new materials as desired. As you use the machine, and override feeds and speeds manually, the cutting condition learn page will remember how you cut under specific circumstances and use those settings automatically. See your manual for more information. For this part, I'm going to select stainless steel. When entering data to a field, the control will automatically bring up the correct keypad for you. If it's in the way, just drag it where you wish with your finger or the mouse. Setting this keyhole symbol to on, will keep the keypad parked where you placed it. Initial Z, is a clearance value above the part, referenced from part Z0. To help explain it, I'll open the graphical help window for this line. It's important to understand, a Mesa Troll part program describes what to do to the part, not machine motion. The Mesa Troll control decides how to move the machine around, so it's important to know where it can do so safely. Initial Z, should be set to a safe clearance plane above the part, where the machine can freely move the tool in X and Y without interference with a part or fixture. Looking at my setup, you can see I have clamps that extend 2 inches above the part so I'll set initial Z to 2.5 inches. ATC mode 0 return path, describes how the machine goes home for a tool change. Choose 0 for Z then X and Y, or 1 for all axes simultaneous. As long as initial Z is high enough, there is no reason to not use a value of 1 for simultaneous. Saving a little time. Multi-mode, is a very basic way of making multiple parts from the same program without excessive tool changes. Each tool will complete its job on all parts before moving on to the next tool or process. The multi 5x2 set, requires the parts to be in a fixed 5x2 grid. Parts are skipped or cut based on placing a 1 anywhere there is a part in the defined grid. If I wish to make, 4 parts at positions 10, 4, 7 and 1, I would put in the value shown to select them. If your fixture is not an accurate 5x2 grid, you could use the offset type for multiple parts instead. In this case, you would enter incremental offsets from the original part 0, to the 0 of each individual part. You can enter offsets for up to 10 parts anywhere on the table. This method is much more flexible, but requires more input. I'm only making one part so I'll set multi-mode to off. Display work piece, is a very simple method of defining the raw stock for your part. Setting this to a 1, enables fields used to define the shape and position of the part. To see what I'm doing while defining the part, I'll open the part graphic window as I define it. My part is a simple flat rectangular piece. It's 15 inches in the x direction, and 6 inches in the y direction. The raw stock is 0.325 inches thick. Rotating the stock around in the window, you can see the part 0 has been assumed to be the center in X and Y and the top of the stock in Z. I want to remove the 25 thousandths extra stock in my facing operation so I'll shift the Z up 0 0.025. Although optional, defining my stock accurately here will make my graphic more realistic. This finishes the top line, so I'll move on to my WPC. Except in the case of a sub-program called from a main, the next unit should always be a WPC unit. The WPC unit contains the offset telling the machine where the part is located. I'll select WPC to create one. The WPC number is a simple and unnecessary identifier, used when there is more than one WPC in a program. It is really only used when searching for the desired WPC and I generally just leave it at zero. The additional WPC field permits me to use several external methods to define my offset. I can choose a standard G-code offset as set on the work offset page. I can use an additional WPC offset as set on the addition page. Or, I can use a predefined G54.1 offset, if available. Using external offsets, rather than setting them in a program, 
can be useful when you have fixed fixtures in your machine. I prefer to set them within the program. So I'll leave this field blank. The theta value is a rotational angle around the Z of the offset. This allows for programming the part square to either X or Y, then rotate it as required for setup errors. Normally, I would set all these values to zero, write my program, then teach the values within the machine. For now, I'll calculate the settings from parameters. On this machine there are a few important parameters that make this possible. Parameter L5, is the distance from the gauge line to the top of the table in Z. Looking at my part setup, I can see the distance from the bottom of my fixture plate to part 0 is 1.5 inches. Adding this to the negative value in parameter L5 gives me a Z location of minus 24.48425. Parameter S5, shows the X and Y center point of the table. If S5 is blank on your machine there should be a tag on the cover which also has this information. These values can be directly entered into the X and Y positions. This puts my setup directly on the center of the table in the machine. For a true setup, I would probably use a properly measured tool to set these values, or a measuring probe. For an example, I'll set 0 on this block to the center in X and Y and 10 thousandths below the top surface in Z. After loading a measured tool into the spindle, bring the tool down to the part. I'll start by touching the edge of the end mill to the X positive edge of the part as shown. In manual mode on the CNC, go to the program page. Select WPC measure, then WPC search. This moves the cursor to the first WPC unit. Highlight the X field, and select teach. Enter the shift distance. The block is 3.5 inches square. The tool is 1 half inch diameter, making my shift distance 2.0 inches to the center. In this case to the negative direction. I'll repeat the procedure for the y-axis. Positioning again on the positive y side of the block with a minus 2.0 offset. For the z, I'll use a 2 inch precision block to find the top with a 2.01 offset. This sets 0, 10 thousandths below the top for the face mill. For an example of setting these values with a spindle mounted probe, load the probe into the spindle. Using manual mode, position the probe to the surface to be measured. Put the control in MDI mode. Go to the program page. Select WPC measure. Select WPC search. Highlight the minus Z sensor. Enter the coordinate of the surface to be measured in this case positive 0.01. Press input, to put the line of code in the MDI window. Press cycle start. The machine will perform the measurement automatically. I'll repeat this procedure on the y-axis. Using a coordinate of positive 1.75 for the wall to be measured. And again, I'll repeat the procedure for the x-axis with a positive 1.75 as the coordinate. As with the teaching method, this put the part 0 at the middle of the block, 10 thousandths below the measured surface. With the top line finished and the WPC entered, we're ready to face the part in the next tutorial.